For the Record, from the creator of the award-winning Remarkable Results Radio Podcast. Now, listen to a slice of wisdom, a concept, a sentiment, a theory, and maybe even a rant from one of your industry colleagues. For the Record. Welcome, aftermarket professionals, to For the Record, episode number one. Carm Capriato here from Remarkable Results Radio and the Town Hall Academy. Now, For the Record brings you personal insights from your industry colleagues. It's a short yet focused opportunity for a rant, a riff, an opinion, or a special perspective that may just align your thinking in a new way. In this inaugural episode release, G. Jerry Trulia brings you his personal perspective on technician training, standards, the importance of foundational training, and labor rates. G.'s been on Remarkable Results Radio before, and you'll read him in Motor Age and see him in so many training classes and videos. I met up with G. for this For the Record rant at Vision KC 2018. The views and opinions expressed are those of my guest and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the author, sponsors, associates, or affiliates of LSTN Media, LLC. For the record, is sponsored by Remarkable Results Radio, the aftermarket's premier podcast and think tank where the stories empower you. Find the talking points for G's rant at remarkableresults.biz slash F001. Now here's G, Jerry Trulia, for the record. Okay, I'm G. Trulia. I am a uh, technician, instructor, owner of ATTS, Automotive Technician Training Services, president of TST, a non-for-profit group, and I want to bring up the bitching and moaning about technicians coming into our industry. One of the big problems I keep hearing is we don't have enough young people coming into the industry. Well, that is a true fact, and it seems to be some of our own fault. Some of our own fault, why? We don't have the proper steps in order. And what I mean by the proper steps in order, really what happens, we have no guidance in the industry of mentoring someone. You know, how much training do you need? Another big issue is, what am I really going to get out of this? I have to invest all this money. You know, I got to buy tools. And I'm not talking about $5,000 of tools, like maybe a carpenter or an electrician, I have to invest thirty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars of tools when I become a master tech. How am I going to make that money and actually make a good living for myself and feed my family? So the bitch and the moaning that constantly goes on, we need to do something about this. Guys like myself who are in the sixties, we need to step up to the plate and actually introduce some things that'll help get people into this industry. The way we're looked at, most technicians or mechanics are looked at as almost second-class citizens. There's no respect, like Rodney Dangerfield used to say, no respect. Well, guess what? There's no respect when your ass is hanging out of your pants and you're filthy, greasy, and dirty, like some people in our industry. We all need to be on the same page. What do I mean by that? There's no standard in this industry. When I was part of the STS group, Service Technician Society, which later became TST, Technician Service Training, one of the things I tried to get pushed through for SAE, for the STS group, was a standard on how much training we need. You know, we say we're professionals, but if we're professionals, how come we don't have a set standard of hours of training? You know, my accountant, he has to go and she has to go through a certain amount of training a year. Same with my cousin who's a doctor. He has to go through so much update a year. And we need to be at that same level. We need to basically have some standards for ourselves. Now, ASE is great. Automotive service excellence, very, very good. I I think it's something that I've pushed many people through for years to show their professionalism. But it's not enough. We need some of the big industry leaders, some of the big companies, the parts suppliers, the manufacturers of tools, not to give a jacket and a free trip somewhere. They need to invest in the future. The future is their customers. The customers are us technicians and the future technicians. Stop giving us the trinkets and give us what we need, a clear path and training. Now, we're at a great event here. I'm at Vision, and there is great training out here. 
and this is one of the few venues in the country that technicians come out there from all over the country and sometimes from other countries as well. But there's not enough of this. The couple of thousand people that are here, that is a pimple on someone's ass in this industry in plain English. There's not enough of that. We need more of that. And we need some people to be on the same page. So you have no standard, and you'll get a guy who thinks he wants to see a high-end instructor. Well, you can't go to a high-end class if you don't know the basics. We did something with TST years back. It was called a hand-on electrical test. This hands-on electrical test was pretty basic circuits. And you know the funny part? A lot of 50% plus of the people failed. And the reason why they failed, they didn't have a good foundation. And let's face it, just like a building with a sagging roof, you don't put a new roof on it if the foundation and the walls are bad. You have to start at the bottom. But no one in this industry wants to do that. Oh, that class won't sell. It's too basic. Well, if we prove to these people or we have a standard that you have to go through this, it doesn't matter what you think you are. You know, our own industry, their own worst enemy. And I'll give you an example. I worked on many state programs, 14 of them to be exact, never mind Canada and other programs. But they would always say, we need a test out. And I'd say, what do you mean you need a test out? Yeah, our guys say they are certified already, so we need them to be tested out where they don't have to take the hands-on test. I said, you know what? If the guy knows what he's doing, he's not going to be against this hands-on test. He'll, He'll accept it, and he'll say, you know what? I'll go through a refresher. Everyone needs to know the basics. And when I look at a lot of hard cars that come to my shop, And they come from different repair shops, from some good guys, body shops, the whole bit. One of the things that really ticks me off, it really does get back to the basics. Everyone wants to take out the big artillery. They want the big missile. They need the BB gun, for Christ's sake. They don't need the big stuff, but they think they do. They want to work with all, i got to pull a lab scope out. Dude, all you needed to use is the most important tools that God gave us. Your brain, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your hands. You look around, sometimes you find a problem. Sometimes you could smell something. Sometimes you could feel something, like a broken wire inside. Even though it's all in one piece, the insulation is in one piece, but the strands inside have broken. And some of you guys that have been around for a while, you know exactly where I'm going with this. We need to get off our bandwagon of pissing and moaning and really just say, look, we need these standards, and everyone has to follow these standards. Let's get on the same page where if we want to bring people in, let's all pay the people at a same type of rate. You know, unions were put in this country for a reason. And in our industry, we don't really have unions in the aftermarket in most places. I mean, there's some union shops, but very, very few. And everyone shoots off their hip. We have different rates. I'll give you an example. You know, I get $158 an hour and 18 cents, and I got a guy down the road getting $45. Now, how he has to buy the same Snap-on or Mac or Mac-O tools or any other tool for that matter as I buy, he's going to pay the same price. He has to work three times as hard as I do to make that money. I don't understand the math. And you know what? People that are doing stuff like that, they feel they don't really have the self-worth. And they're going to take longer, charge people more hours than it actually should have taken if they went to a true professional that has the training and the tools. So if we could just get together and have some good dialogue about what we need, and I'm really sick of all the lip service we've had for years. We have done this on many, many different committees that we're going to improve this, we're going to do that, we're going to get rid of the bad guys when this autonomous car comes out now. Well, I heard that with from electronic ignition to disc brakes to computer control, guess what? The shitheads are still in it, okay? They're still in the business. And every person that is not up to speed makes it bad for you and I, the professionals. So I would really like to see people be more professional, and this including, uh, includes paying people. You know how many people in our industry pay half on the books, half off? God forbid that guy gets hurt. He's only going to get the half on you paid. If he goes for a loan, he's only going to get, oh, you only make 30 grand a year? I'm sorry, we can't give you a loan for a house. 
You know, you look at the average pay for our industry. It's bad. This is why we don't attract more people. You know, I got buddies that are electricians. They make well in the six-digit area, okay? They have a van with maybe $5,000 of tools in a van, and you know what my friend Dominic always says to me? He goes, hey, gee, if I come into your building and you don't pay me, and I'm going to charge you $150 an hour for me and $75 for my helper, you're not going to get a CO for this building. You're not going to get your lights turned on in this building. So we don't have that. We think cutting the price and being the cheapest that we can be is the best thing. And let's, let's take the Vanos or variable valve timing system. You know how many of these are ruined? I just wrote an article for Motor Age on oil and timing chain and component wear. Because we're not playing on the same playing field. There again goes the standard. We use the cheapest oil in these big box stores, and customers look at a 1995 oil change. Think about this. 1995, my God, I was, I was working in an SO station. So I date myself working in an SO station. It's no longer SO, it's Exxon, unless you're in Canada, okay, or somewhere else in the world. How could you do a 1995 oil change when I can't buy the correct oil for your car? And here's why we have sometimes there's a problem with the variable valve timing system. Why don't we just have, here's the standard, what you have to use. And if everyone stayed to that standard and followed manufacturer recommendations rather than going, you don't need that. You just need our 1995 oil change. That guy's trying to rip you off getting $125 for that change. This makes us all look bad. And it's an industry of, I, I think of people that maybe mean good in some cases to try to save a customer money, but they're not really thinking properly. And you know why they're not thinking properly? We all need education. Now, not only education in the automotive business, I'll talk about that in a second. If we had more educated people in this country, we wouldn't have so much turmoil in the first place. But I won't get political now. I'll talk about just the technician training. We need everyone to take the same training. And, you know, I, I ranted about this just a few minutes ago, but again, I've seen this for years. I'm going to mention a good friend of mine, John Thornton, a phenomenal instructor, unbelievable. He's high-end, him, Bernie Thompson, they're the probably top high-end guys in the business. But people who go to their classes, if I tested them the day after their training, majority of those people would not be able to perform the task. They're going to go... Boy, that Thornton, that, that Thompson, they're, they're really smart dudes. I can't do that, but that was a real interesting class. Some of them will try and maybe buy the equipment that maybe they were seen in, in the class or, you know, but most of them can't achieve that level because you know why? They're taking training and skipping. It's like putting that roof on that house that I spoke about before and not fixing the root cause, the foundation. And this is my uh, rant in this industry. <laughs> Listening to For the Record from Remarkable Results Radio. Subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast listening app. Find all Remarkable Results podcast content at remarkableresults.biz. Remember, your learning curve never sounded so good.